Imagine some object starting at this point P and moving this way like this and then turning around and moving this way like this and turning around and moving this way like this backwards and forth, backwards and forth. You've seen this kind of thing before. Uh, a pendulum swinging backwards and forth, backwards and forth. A spring springing, boing, 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 boing. This kind of thing is called simple harmonic motion. And at its most basic, it's modeled by a sine curve or a cosine curve. Cosine curve that you can see here, uh, time is on the x-axis and displacement, x, is on the y-axis. Um, and this particle is starting from the positive here, so positive here, and it's moving to the origin here, and then moving past the origin in the negative direction, and then oscillating back. And obviously periodic functions go on and on and on forever and ever and ever. So you know how to model that, that movement. You know the equation of that function. Placement equals A cos omega t plus beta. Now I know in maths methods you tend to use like A, B and C here, but who cares what letters we're using. That's the letters that appear on my formula sheet, so we're going to use those ones. Just to get you in the right head, headspace, this A value is the amplitude, the distance of the oscillation itself, the amplitude. So this is positive A and this is negative A here and here. The period is going to be equal to 2 pi over omega here. And this beta here, it tells you your phase shift. Now this has a phase shift of zero, but this could be shifted over a little bit. The first important formula we're going to look at when it comes to simple harmonic motion, we're also going to look at a velocity function. Now, you know how to find the derivative of that. So you could come up with a velocity function in terms of t, but I'm going to find a velocity function, or I'm going to give you a velocity function in terms of displacement instead. So it's not so much a velocity function, but a velocity relation. Velocity squared is equal to omega squared a squared minus x squared. Now, I'm not going to derive that for you. We've got bigger fish to fry here. You can Google how to derive that. I'll put something on our notes here. Uh, that'll do. What about a uh, acceleration function? So acceleration is going to be equal to negative omega squared x. Now, in all of these, x is displacement. This is x here, and this is time here. So now we have velocity and acceleration relationships with displacement. Now, all of this is going to be available to you on your formula sheet, you can see the second derivative, the acceleration function, is equal to negative w squared, so that's that thing there. You can see they give two versions of the displacement function, a sine one and a cos one, where these are just our phase shifts. I'm focusing on this one here. A velocity squared function, um, a period, so that's period, and then the frequency, how many times this does in a, a certain amount of time. Just so you fully grasp what's going on when it comes to harmonic motion, don't consider any of this. We just can consider a thing that moves from point P through the origin and to point Q. And that's shown on our graph by this thing here. Now remember, this is our um, displacement time graph here. And as the thing moves from here to here, we can talk about the values of its displacement here, here, and here. At those points, its displacement is negative a, then zero, then positive a. What about its velocities at that point, that point, and that point? At the extremes, its velocity is zero. That makes sense. Think of your pendulum. It swings, it stops, and then it comes back the other way. It's at its maximum speed when it gets to the bottom of its swing, and that speed is going to be plus or minus omega a. Now, in this case, I'm showing you something moving in from the negative to the positive, so that's positive omega a, but if it was moving from that way to that way, like in this half of the graph, it would be negative omega a. But in any case, it's at a maximum velocity at that point right there. And talking about acceleration, at its extremes, it's at plus or minus omega squared a. It's accelerating quickly when it gets to here, and here, or accelerating a fast rate. And this one, when it gets to here, its acceleration is zero. It's neither accelerating nor decelerating, whether it's moving that way or that way. Now that that's out of the way, I kind of feel the need to show you how to do this question even though I'm going to do it super duper fast because you actually already know how to do this and it doesn't use these formulas at all. Uh, you're given a displacement uh, function in terms of time and it says the particle's velocity at time t. Now if you're going to do that, 
you just find the derivative of this because that gives you the velocity function. So x equals this, the derivative of uh, x will give you velocity, and that's the derivative we are done. Uh, the particle's acceleration at time t, again, you're just finding the derivative of that. So you've done that before. All right, derivative of that is negative 16 pi squared on 9 sine 2 pi t on 3. That is part p done. What is the period of the motion? Okay, looking at the period, we know that period is equal to uh, 2 pi over b, or in this case over omega, since we're talking in a new language here. So what's that period going to be equal to? Period is equal to 2 pi over 2 pi over 3. All right, so that's going to be equal to a period of 3 seconds. Don't forget your units here. Finally, it asks for the particle's maximum speed. This, don't forget, the velocity tells us something about the speed. The velocity function is a cos graph that looks like that, and the amplitude is 8 pi on 3. So that's our maximum speed. Now remember, speed is non-directional, so speed's going to be 8 pi on 3 here, and 8 pi on 3 here as well. These are our maximum speeds. Now, Again, this video doesn't really have anything, sorry, this question doesn't really have anything to do with these formulas, but I needed to show it to you so you can see how different our next question is. Here's our second example here, nice and high so you can see it. A particle moves in a straight line with acceleration given by this function, where x is the position of the particle at time t. The particle's initial position of velocity are that and that. Find the period and amplitude of the motion. All right, so we're given an acceleration function, and we're given an acceleration function in terms of this. So if the acceleration equals omega squared x from our formula, and we know that that's equal to negative 9x from here, then omega squared x is equal to 9, and omega is equal to 3. Now you'll notice I'm using plus 3, not plus or minus 3. Now, think about what omega does in our original uh, cosine function. It flips the function like this, because if you've got a negative period, it just flips it around the y-axis. That's not going to have, that's not going to um, do anything materially to our cosine function that a phase shift can't do as well. Uh, so we can just assume that this is positive, and if required, the phase shift will deal with, with any other things that need to be dealt with. We know that w equals 3. We can find the period, because we know that period is equal to 2 pi over omega, so the period is 2 pi on 3. So we're halfway through our question, we need to find the amplitude. Now looking at our formula, the acceleration function doesn't tell us anything about the amplitude, but the velocity relation does. That A is going to help us. So let's write out the uh, velocity relation. We'll say that velocity squared is equal to omega squared, so omega is 3, so 3 squared a squared minus x squared. All right, what are we going to do with that now? Let's go to our original question. The particle's initial position and velocity are this and this and this and this. Okay, this one's more important. Um, when x is equal to 0, the velocity is equal to 4, and we can put that information in to our equation. Subbing in that, we get 4 squared equals 9, so that's 3 squared, a squared minus 0 squared. So that looks like 16 uh, equals 9a squared. So we can divide by 9 here, and we'll get 16 on 9 equals a squared, which means that a equals uh, the square root of 16 on 9, which is 4 on 3. A plus or minus? Again, not required here, because a plus or minus is going to flip our function, like this, and rather than flipping a cosine function like this, or like this in the previous bit, we can just shift it along, and that's going to have the desired effect. So we're just going to assume that bit's positive, assume that bit's positive, and our phase shift will deal with anything we have to deal with. Alright, so that's part A done, we found the period, we found the amplitude, now let's find equations for the particle's position, velocity, and acceleration at time t. Now, how can we go about that? Well, First of all, let's move up to displacement, because that'll give us the displacement at time t. So we know that equation already. We know that displacement is equal to a, we know what a is, it's 4 on 3, cos, bracket, um, 
omega. We know that omega is 3, 3t plus, and then we've got this beta here. Now, this is that phase shift that I've been talking about that's going to solve all of our problems with positives and negatives here. Um, all right, let's go back to our original question. There must be some additional information to allow us to find that beta. Uh, the particle's initial position and velocity are 0, 0. Perfect. So now we're just going to sub 0, 0 in for displacement and time. If I sub 0, 0 in there, 0 and 0 in there, we get to here. 0 divided by 4 thirds will also be 0. We get 0 equals cos beta. Now, what could beta be? Well, if you solve that, you're going to get beta is equal to pi on 2, or 3 pi on 2, or 5 pi on 2, or 7 pi on 2. The simplest value to take is going to be pi on 2, so let's choose pi on 2. Alright, and now we have a pretty decent equation for our simple harmonic motion. Now, for those of you who are really cluey, you should be looking at this and thinking, oh, you, sh you could have done this better, right? Because if instead we'd chosen not to use cos, but instead to use sine, because our formula sheet says we can use either of these, if we'd use sine here and sub zero in, we'd have sine we'd have sine, we'd have sine, and zero sine beta would be equal to zero. And therefore, we'd have the much nicer equation of x equals four-thirds sine 3t. Now, both answers are technically correct, but if you sort of look forward into the future a little bit, you can see which which equation you should go for. And when I say look forward into the future a little bit, I mean here where it says the particle's initial position and velocity are zero and zero. If its initial position is zero, that means it's starting from the origin. And if it's starting from the origin, a sine curve is a better choice. All right, what can we do from here? Well, from here, it's really, really straightforward. We can say velocity and acceleration we can find derivatives and we're done. x equals 4 thirds sine 3t, v equals 4 cos 3t, and a equals negative 12 sine 3t. That is done. Uh, there is just a tiny little bit more that we might want to talk about with simple harmonic motion, but that is certainly enough to get us started.